I have not been on YouTube in quite a minute. Haven't had anything really to talk about. Don't get me wrong, there's been topics, there's been things, but like, I haven't had anything that I really needed to talk about. And now I do. I'm gonna skip this cutscene. Um, I, I have something to discuss now, and um, it's it's really bothersome. Not the most egregious thing in the world, but not great either. You see, I tried the other day to watch the Netflix Resident Evil. Now, any of you who have been on my channel for any period of time know that I'm quite the big Resident Evil fan. I have been for many years. For me, Resident Evil is a franchise that I enjoyed for the exploration, the horror aspect, the puzzles. It's It's got its fair share of brain teasers as well as a lot of other things going for it. And when I first made my channel, you know, all the way back in the day when I was just, you know, a, a wee young teenager, you know, I, I made videos complaining about the Paul Anderson films, praising the CG films, which I still think are pretty darn good. But honestly, I feel like I'm very jaded. I feel like I'm very uninvolved now. I, 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 I tried to watch an episode of this on Netflix and I found myself bored not outraged not angry bored how do you how do you manage that how do you take something like Resident Evil and make me sit there trying to watch it only to only to go to my phone and look at memes and 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 Google and Facebook it's it's really disappointing and I don't know what exactly Capcom is doing. I feel that this has to be some sort of tax write-off. This has to be some... They have to be getting something out of what they're doing with Resident Evil. Because there's no way that they just keep giving the brand name to these people that try to Americanize it and butcher it relentlessly. I don't, I don't understand what they're doing. I don't know why they're doing it. And it's never made adequate sense to me. I mean, when I when I look at the Paul Anderson films now, those those seem kind of like guilty pleasures at this point. They went so far off into left field and did such crazy things, you know, introducing the character that is Alice, and 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 there was a lot about them that felt like the video games. I mean, say what you will about the later films, but the first one, which is actually still in my mind a good film, it's it's not a bad movie. But, like, you get to Apocalypse, which, you know, was heavily influenced by Resident Evil 2 and 3 and had Nemesis and all this other cool stuff. Like, yeah, after the third film, they got a little bit out into left field. But, like, those movies still have more in common with Resident Evil as a franchise than this Netflix show does. And, and when I think about, like, all the things that people have tried to do to, to either modernize it or bring it up for a new generation, or, you know, just drastically, just taking, just taking the name Resident Evil, and then drastically changing everything about it. Like, I haven't seen the new movie, Welcome to Raccoon City, which I've heard is a, a really poorly done mashup between the original Resident Evil storyline and the Resident Evil 2 storyline. But I decided I didn't even want to watch it, because, like, seeing what they did to my boy Leon, like, how could you? You you take this character that is well-defined in the source material and you give him curly brown hair. You couldn't get a blonde actor. You couldn't get anybody that could adequately portray what I view Leon as. Like, he's been in several games and several films at this point, and you guys just... You couldn't do anything with that? It's the worst. It's the absolute worst. It's very hard to get around these guys with these alternate controls. Ah! Ah! It's, it's really disappointing. I see the things that these people are doing with this franchise. And again, I just have to ask, like, what's the fucking point? Why do you spend so much money, so much time, and so much effort... To get something with the Resident Evil brand name on it, and then you decide, eh, you know what? Let's just butcher it. I don't get it. It's never made sense to me.
I can't reach you. Just a second. Oh, nope. Don't grab me, okay? I'm going to cut you. I'm going to get close enough to cut you. Ugh. Maybe I'll just get up here. You can't. Can you vomit? I can't remember if they can vomit in this one. No, nah, that was something for Resident Evil 2. Get stabbed. Anywho. I've, I've seen time and time again this franchise get drugged through the dirt over and over and over by different studios and different development teams. Say what you will about films like... Um, Say what you will about films like Degeneration, Damnation, Vendetta. I even watched, uh, on Netflix, Infinite Darkness. I have it on Blu ray now. I thought it was really, really good. It stays true to what I feel Resident Evil is. And, and yeah, you can either, like, when making Resident Evil, you can either go super far into, like, later Resident Evils where it's, you know, world spanning bio terror, or you can keep it close to home where it's, you know, this horrible thing that happens in a small town or in a small, you know, mansion environment. You can you can do things like that. But I see time and time again where these people just, in my mind, fundamentally misunderstand what the hell is going on with Resident Evil. Films like Degeneration, Damnation, Vendetta, and even um, The Infinite Darkness... Like, they are very heavily inspired from what I would say is Resident Evil 4 and, and Ford. But, like, they still have heart. They still have character. They still have these individuals that we love. They have, you know, Leon. They have Claire. They have Ada. You know, the, these, these iconic characters. And I see these studios and these Western filmmakers taking these characters and absolutely butchering them. We're not talking about just Paul Anderson, okay? We're talking about Welcome to Raccoon City, and we are going to talk about this Netflix show. Now, honestly, I'm going I'm to be real with you guys. I've only watched one episode of it. If you guys want me to force myself to watch the rest of it for content, then you have to do me a favor, okay? Number one, please just like the video. I know I've been gone for a long time. I know a lot of you may be very disappointed with me. But I need you to like the video so that I know that you're engaged. The next thing I need you to do is leave a comment. I'm not entirely worried about what kind of comment you leave. I would like to hear your thoughts on how Resident Evil has been continuously butchered throughout the years in film form. But I would also like to hear your comments on Welcome to Raccoon City. Should I watch it? Should I waste the money on Redbox to see this movie? I want to hear your thoughts on... Uh, the Netflix show. I want to hear your thoughts on Degeneration, Damnation, Vendetta. I'm being called at the moment. <laughs> Woo! Um, I want to hear your thoughts on these things. But, I, I, oh God, just a second. I'm being interrupted. Do 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 do. I'm recording a video, and you're calling me again. I love you so much. I'm fucking recording. Anywho, I want to hear your thoughts on these things. I want to know what you think about it. But I've only watched one episode of the Netflix Resident Evil, and. If you guys want me to watch more of it and discuss it, I can do that, but it's it's really up to you. Do 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 do. Gonna pause that so I don't get eaten alive. What are you trying to tell me, darling? Anywho, <clears throat> the Resident Evil Netflix show. Let's, let's go ahead and, and talk about it real quick. This show is boring. And it bastardizes the characters. Something we've seen happen a lot with Resident Evil. I myself don't particularly care for how they... There we go. I don't particularly care for how they take these characters and butcher them. Ooh, you are already coming after me, aren't you? Okay. 
they take these characters and they butcher them in quite an awful way. And I'm not I'm not very fond of it. The 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 biggest issue that I have so far with the Netflix adaptation of Resident Evil isn't just the fact that it's relentlessly boring. It's also the fact that I don't know what kind of themes and tone it's going for. You see, oh hello. You see one of the first things that I noticed when watching it was they took a character who I assume, because everyone keeps saying he's Wesker. Everyone says that this is supposed to be Albert Wesker. They took a character who, in every other form of media that he has been in, Wesker has been betrayed as a blonde white man. And don't get me wrong, the actor, I love the actor. I've seen him in a lot of different movies and a lot of different games. I think he's a great actor. But he is not my first pick for Wesker. But that's just that's just one big issue. Like if this guy is supposed to be Albert Wesker, then there's a lot of I would say extra baggage and extra things to go over in regards to his character versus who he's trying to be in the show and who he is supposed to be in the games. But like that was the first big thing I noticed. The second big thing I noticed was outside of them taking the character and naming him Wesker, there isn't a whole hell of a lot else that uh makes me think of Resident Evil with this show. The running theme that I saw in the first episode alone was that the show is going to bounce between this post-apocalyptic shit and the past in which you follow uh, the female protagonist and her her dad is Wesker, I guess. and And you're supposed to just, you know... You're supposed to just bounce back and forth between these characters and these timelines. And I'm assuming at some point it would converge and, and things would make sense. But I, I didn't understand exactly what they were going for. You see, anybody that's played the Resident Evil games knows that the theme of Resident Evil isn't, Oh, post-apocalypse. It's, it's the exact same zombie apocalypse you've seen in every other kind of multimedia. It's boring as shit. No, that's, that's not what we go for in the Resident Evil games. It's not about that. It's, damn, there's a lot of you on hard. It's, it's more so about something happening in the now with normal people. It's not about it's it's not trying to be the fucking Walking Dead or any Romero film. It's it's not it's not the theme. It's it's bioterrorism, it's mad science, it's spooky mansions and dilapidated castles. That's what it's always been about. But unfortunately, <laughs> these people that make these movies and these shows never seem to understand this. So of course the show bounces between the future and the past, and I didn't turn that all the way. It bounces between the future and the past, and besides the fact that Wesker is not a white blonde man, I noticed that these kids come to a new town, and it's called, I guess, New Raccoon City? Can anybody explain to me whether or not this is supposed to be some bastardized alternate universe, or if it's a continuation of the games? Because if you are going to a place called... New Raccoon City. Hello. Y'all can't come downstairs, can you? Nah, you can't come downstairs. And just reload. If it's if it's taking place in New Raccoon City, that would imply that old Raccoon City exists. And I have to ask that if you are a person in this universe, why the fuck would you ever want to live in New Raccoon City. That doesn't sound like the best idea, considering the old Raccoon City got nuked after it was, you know, bombarded by the infected. Oh, you're still alive. Take a nap. Thank you. It, it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. If, if people in this universe know about Raccoon City, they would also know about Umbrella. But nobody seems bothered by Umbrella. Nobody seems to know. So is it an alternate dimension? Or is it a continuation? Is it some alternate timeline? Is it, have we diverged? Is this a variant? I don't know. And it doesn't make any sense. Like, if you wanted to recreate the show as, you know, a continuation, or if you wanted to do it as an alternate thing, why not just call it Raccoon City? 
Why new Raccoon City? Because if it's new Raccoon City, old Raccoon City exists, and that shit went down, people know about it, they shouldn't be comfortable in your nice porcelain city. I'm just saying. However, the, the, the big issue that I have with the show isn't just the bastardization and the confusion of what exactly it's trying to do. It's also the fact that it's fucking boring. So, <laughs> let, me just, let me just state real quick. If I were given the budget, the time, and the effort. As a fan of the franchise, here's what I would do to make a show. All right? I wouldn't set it in the far future post-apocalypse. I wouldn't try to rewrite the past. No. I'll tell you what I would do. I would set my show in the smack dab middle of Raccoon City, and it's literally just a few days before the outbreak. My show would have, like, three main protagonists that you follow throughout just residents and denizens of, of course, Raccoon City. So you have, like, let's say there's a police officer. This guy works for the RPD. He's a beat cop. You know, he takes care of petty criminals. He's waiting because he's getting a new rookie hire in, in a few days. And he's just, he's just noticing that there is suddenly a lot more reports of violent incidents happening in his city. Another character could be a... Um, a nurse, maybe uh, an RN that works in the Raccoon City uh, hospital system. And this person is, uh, you know, noticing a lot more people coming in with, you know, injuries. And, and of course, the, the violence is ramping up. And they're not sure about this new sickness that's breaking out. You have people, you know, coming in very, very ill. And, and obviously, everyone's just a little bit worried about this because they've not experienced anything like this before. So, you know, that's, that's how I would start that off. The third character, of course, very important, very pivotal character, would be an Umbrella Scientist working in the Arclay Mansion right before the outbreak occurs. I, if I had the opportunity to make a show, you would have these three main characters that you follow throughout the runtime, and of course there could be other tertiary characters, because we need cannon fodder after all, but these are the characters that you'd be following and paying attention to whilst you watch the show. And again, I wouldn't try to rewrite history. I wouldn't try to do alternate timelines. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, uh, you know, race swap characters because that just seems kind of fucked up. I'm just saying, in 2022, we should probably leave characters' races alone. But I would do things to change around events and scenarios. Like, for instance, if if I'm going to set it in Raccoon City, that gives me a plethora of different things that I can do with the characters and the scenarios. See, if we're in Raccoon City, I can take from different source materials. I have, obviously, Resident Evil 2, Resident Evil 3, The Outbreak franchise, uh, Operation Raccoon City. I mean, who's to say that there wasn't some umbrella guys running around doing stuff? I mean, we've literally seen it with Hunk. But that's, that's how it would go. I would do the show, and I would have these characters interact with each other, and of course you'd have them trying to find a way out of the city and surviving this horrible outbreak. But that's what you get from someone who's actually a fan of Resident Evil. That's what you get when you have somebody who's paid attention to the source material who actually cares. You're, you're going to get this type of scenario where they're like, hmm, I think we should do this. You're not having characters that are like, you know what, let's change this character's race for no fucking reason. Let's change this character around. Let's do this. Hey, let's have a place called New Raccoon City that makes no goddamn sense within the context of the universe we're fabricating. Let's just do all this shit. And it drives me fucking crazy. I found myself bored before the end of the first episode, because outside of the fact that one of the characters is named Wesker, and outside of the fact that there is a zombie dog at one point, there is literally nothing at all about this first episode that says Resident Evil. Thank you for the head pop. There is nothing about this show that says Resident Evil. Now, maybe... Maybe in later episodes, it's going to get a little bit more Resident Evil-like. But I found myself so disappointed trying to watch this shit. It was boring. And I shouldn't be bored while watching Resident Evil. I can tell you, from the very first episode of Infinite Darkness, I wasn't bored. I was having a good time. I was engaged with characters. I was seeing things happen. 
this show seems apprehensive to have any fucking thing happen, and it's incredibly disappointing. I just, I just don't know what to say. And again, you know, Capcom, they keep doing this with the franchise. I can't assume that this is making any money, because you're bastardizing something that the fans like, so they're not going to watch it. Nobody's going to really pay attention to it. The only ones that even give a shit are content creators. <laughs> Hello. Off me. Off me. I thought you were dead. Oh, you're not dead. Why aren't you dead? Anywho, like I was saying, the, the only ones that are going to watch this shit are content creators that need to get the clicks, that need to get the attention. None of the people that are fans of the franchise are going to watch this because it bastardizes something they enjoy. And none of the new people are going to watch this because if they gave a fuck about Resident Evil, they would have already been paying attention to Resident Evil. Not everyone on the planet plays video games. And that's okay, you know? You don't have to enjoy video games. That's fine. You know, everybody has their different hobbies. Some people like video games. Some people like football. It's fine. And then you get those weirdos that like both. I don't ever trust those people. Those people freak me the fuck out, I'll be honest with you. But you have a lot of different people that like a lot of different things, and that's okay. But my problem is when you take something that people like and try to homogenize it and turn it into something it's not, all you do is bastardize the entire thing to the point where no one is going to give a fuck. And that's what they do. That's what they've always done with these fucking movies, these TV shows. They take something that we as a fan base enjoy and bastardize it to the point that none of us want to engage with it. It's disappointing. It's always been disappointing. And I don't I don't understand why they keep doing it. I have no issue whatsoever with the CG films. I think they're pretty damn good. I have, you know, I have kind of reconciled myself with the Paul Anderson films. Because those, those movies, again, are just kind of a guilty pleasure at this point. I, I like the first two. The rest are dog shit, but they're watchable dog shit. Like, there's a big difference between, you know, watching a car fire and watching a car fire with fireworks, okay? And I feel like, I'm trying to remember where I'm going, I think I'm going this way. I feel like a lot of times when you're, you're watching the Paul Anderson films, you're at the very least getting some entertainment value. But trying to watch this Netflix show, I, I didn't feel like I was getting anything out of it. I was so goddamn bored. There was, there was nothing. There was nothing to enjoy about it. And, and I just, I don't know. Like, if, if you guys want me to watch the rest of it, let me know. Comment down below. Tell me that you want me to watch the rest of it. But, I think I'm gonna pass. If I don't, if I don't have to engage with this shit, I'm just gonna pass. Because holy fucking shit. It is so bad. How many bullets do I have left? Oof. I'm also... Ah! I'm also quite hurt. Stay down. I... 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 I don't like the Netflix Resident Evil. I don't know if anybody who's an actual fan of Resident Evil will like the Netflix Resident Evil. Everyone that I've heard talk about it so far has called it complete horseshit. And it really, really is. It's not very good at all, and I think there's a lot better things you do with your time. Like watching Infinite Darkness, or playing Resident Evil. There's no reason for this show to exist. Uh, I feel like the actor who's pr portraying Wesker is a great actor. While watching episode one, there was only one genuine scene where he actually, you know, put his acting chops on the on the on the screen and and oh my god, my brain. There was a scene that he was in that I thought was very engaging. After all, I was looking at my phone most of the show. But the part where he's threatening the other person's job, that was some good acting. That was some intense shit. I liked that. But he's not gonna be able to save this show. There's no fucking way he could save this show. There's no salvaging the dumpster fire that I can already see coming. Hopefully there's fireworks, but I doubt it. Let me know what you thought of the Netflix Resident Evil. Let me know what you think of Welcome to Raccoon City, whether or not I should watch that. It'll probably piss me off. It looks stupid. Um, and let me know what you think of this video. 
because I've been gone for a hot minute. I haven't had anything to really talk about. But I'm here. I've made a video. Please watch it. Please support it. And I will see you guys, hopefully, very soon in another video or possibly a Let's Play. Take care. And, uh, yeah. The Netflix Resident Evil is shit. <laughs>